be talking about restoring sight with an electronic implant. And uh, most of us take our sight for granted. And it wasn't until my grandmother went blind that actually I decided to go into ophthalmology. And not only ophthalmology, but also uh, led to a degree in engineering to be able to do what you're, what you're going to see coming up. So uh, there are many people who are blind from part of their retina being damaged, the light sensing cells, the photoreceptors. And here's an example of a condition which afflicts one in 4,000 where you go completely blind by the age of 50. There are other types of conditions like macular degeneration where you're left legally blind. And so what we envisioned was can you put an electronic chip, an implant that would bypass the damaged nerve cells in the eye. And in fact, what you're seeing has been built, which is a tiny camera placed in the glasses, which in real time captures information and sends it wirelessly. So both power and data are sent wirelessly to the implant. And this, then this implant stimulates with tiny electrodes, which are the consistency of saran wrap. So it's not a computer chip in your eye but it's saran wrap type of bioelectronics which stimulates the remaining nerve cells in your eye. And so effectively you're hooked up wirelessly to a camera and this information is then sent to the brain. So this is how uh, these blind patients, we believe, uh, would be able to see. So you could see here is a video of a blind person, um, a person who's been blind for 50 years. And the question we asked is, after all, if you haven't used it for 50 years, do you lose it? Can we actually put an implant in this person? What type of vision would you get? And you'll hear there's an audio piece to it, but in this high contrast environment, you'll see what this subject is able to tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a plate. Okay, sir. Thank you. So this patient only has 16 pixels or 16 electrodes that are wired to this camera and to the brain. And this is a high contrast environment. But one of our pa my patients, who's a grandmother, actually kept telling me how she plays with her grandson and told me some amazing stories. And what you'll see next is actually a television, uh, a BBC TV clip. BBC went and filmed this, my patient, and you'll see what she's able to do. No one expects grandma to play like a professional, but for Linda Morford that any ball goes in is amazing. She's totally blind. The small circle in her glasses is a camera, and some clever electronics turns the images into patterns of dark and light. It may not sound like much, but for Linda it's made a huge difference. I think it's quite staggering, and I think this is the story. If you don't take anything else away, is the fact that the human brain is able to take very root, crude information from the eye and make a lot of sense out of it. Now, this didn't happen with the throw of a switch. It happened with training and over time, but this is an amazing story. I'll just show you, I'll share an antidote with you because this research and working with these patients is a lot of fun. She told me how she loves to interact with her grandson I just mentioned. Well, they went to an amusement park and at this point, I was starting to cringe, and she got on a roller coaster with her grandson. And she does not like roller coasters, but she figured she'd be fine because she could just, you know, um, she can't see anyway, so she would just shut her eye, except she was wearing this device. Well, if you close your eye, the camera's outside, the images were still going in. <laughs> so it was, it was truly a horrific ride for her. Um, but in any event, uh, back to this device, the Argus 2 now has 60 channels, uh, 60 pixels of information. This is the latest in this version. It's undergoing international trials in the hope of being approved soon uh, by the FDA and also worldwide. And we were the first here at USC to implant this uh, implant. So where are we with these devices? Um, over the years, I've shown you some 16 electro data. I just mentioned about the 60 electro device. And as we start to increase the electrodes, the hope is to get to that ability uh, of being able to read 
recognize faces. And as you start to do that, the number of people that you help starts to increase greatly. So uh, clearly this has been called a moonshot for many reasons. Uh, but what, what I've explained to you, and hopefully you've got the gist of it, that it's an interdisciplinary uh, work that's at the cutting edge of science, engineering, and medicine. It certainly has been a long-term effort of mine for 20 years. It's multidisciplinary, high risk, but high payoff. And I think the key is that if we start to develop these sorts of devices, we'll start to understand some fundamental scientific issues, such as how does the brain work? What kind of plasticity does the brain have to be able to regain a sight that they've lost? And of course, if we can do this, we'll be able to help a lot of other types of neural implants. So I'd like to conclude by saying that in my belief, in my mind, machines make humans not cyborgs, but machines actually, in this case, make humans more human. Thank you for your attention.